What's up everyone, it's Nick McCollum here, and in this video, we're gonna be working through the practice problems for strings and string operations for my Python Fundamentals course. Now before we get started, be sure to subscribe to this channel to get all of my future videos showing you how to become a better software developer. With that out of the way, let's dig in. Problem one says, create a string using single quotes that says, this is my first string, and store it in a variable called string. Okay, so we'll do two single quotes, and within those single quotes, we'll write, this is my first string. All right, so the first part is done. The second part says store it in a variable called string. How do we do that? We have to go back to the start of this line and say string equals this is my first string. Now, this is the variable name as we've talked about. This is the assignment operator, and this is the value that's actually assigned to the variable called string. Now we'll run that cell and that part is done. Let's move on to problem two. This problem says, create a string using double quotes that says, my second string has arrived, exclamation mark, and store it in a variable called my underscore second underscore string. So as before, we'll start with the string itself. The question specifically specifies to use double quotes. So we will say, double quote, double quote. <clears throat> Within those, we will write, my second string, oops, my second string has arrived, exclamation mark. As before, we move back to the start of this line and we say my underscore second underscore string equals. Run that cell block and we are done problem two. Let's move on to problem three, which says create a multi-line string with different pizza ingredients on each line. Store it in a variable called pizza ingredients. Okay, so we saw in the last video that <clears throat> we can actually create multi-line comments in Python using triple quotes like this. So anything that goes in here is actually a comment like that. Now this is actually the exact same syntax for creating multi-line strings. And in fact, a multi-line comment is actually just a multi-line string that doesn't serve any purpose in your code. So to change this quote unquote multi-line comment into a multi-line string, what we have to do is just replace this text inside of it with the text that we want. So we want a different pizza ingredient on each line. Let's do, uh, I like Canadian pizza. So mushrooms, uh, pepperoni, cheese sausage. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. And then to assign this to a variable called pizza ingredients, we do the same thing we did before, move to the start of the code cell, write the variable name, pizza ingredients, and then assign it to that with the equality sign or what's also called the assignment operator. We run that and uh, the code has executed correctly. If we want to make sure that the string has actually been assigned to the variable properly, we can do a print statement at the end of the code block like this, pizza ingredients, and it prints out this multi-line string. Perfect, problem three is done. Let's move on to problem four, which says concatenate str1 and str2 in the code cell below. Put a space between them when you concatenate them. Okay, so we saw in the lesson that accompanies this video that you can concatenate strings with the plus, op plus sign like this. So what we'll do is say str1 plus str2. What does that give us? Houston, Texas with no space. Now you can see in the actual question that it specifies to put a space between them when you concatenate them. So how can we do this? Well, the concatenation operator for strings can actually be used as many times as you want. So we could do plus a different variable, plus a different variable, as long as we wanted like into infinity. Uh, so what we'll have to do here is between these two strings, we'll have to concatenate in another string, uh, which contains a space. We can do that two different ways. We could create a separate string like this, which just contains a space and then put that in here like that. So you can see Houston, Texas is, has a space between them as desired. Or a quicker way to do this would be instead of storing that space in a third string and then referencing that third string when you concatenate them, you can actually just put the space in there directly like this. Let's see what that gives us. Houston space, Texas, just like we want. Okay, so that's problem four. Problem five says print cowboy underscore string five times. Uh, we saw in the lesson that when you want to concatenate strings, you can use the plus operator, but if you want to concatenate the same string many times in a row, you can actually use the multiplication operator too. So if we want to print cowboy string five times, the easiest way to do this is cowboy underscore strings, oh, sorry, underscore string times five. And there we go, the string prints out five times. Now, of course, you could have done this using the actual plus operator like this five times, but Oh, I forgot my plus there. But that's actually, you know, harder to read. And unless you count along the plus signs or something, it's much harder to see how many times it'll actually print out. So this is actually a bad practice. Do not do this. Don't do this. 
And uh, if you need to print a, the same string out multiple times, please use the asterisk or the multiplication operator instead. Okay, problem six. Using string interpolation, uh, use the following variables to write the sentence, the 44th president of the United States was Barack Obama. Okay, so string interpolation, as we've seen, is the act of putting variables into a string. So the first thing we want to do is write the actual string that needs to get filled in. So the 44th president of the United States was what? Barack Obama. Now, how do we do this? We can use the, uh, the concatenation operator that we saw previously to do this. President first name plus, and then we need a space, and then we'll have to add on the president last name. Let's run this and see what it gives us. The 44th president of the United States was Barack Obama. Okay, so this is one way to solve this problem, but there's actually a better way, which we referenced in the lesson called F strings. Now, uh, so for now, I'll just copy this, paste it below, and then comment this out. If we want to do this with an F string, what you need to do is at the very start of the string before the first quotation mark, put an F like that, and then uh, you'll have to close this in another quotation mark. And then in here, instead of concatenating these in with plus signs, all you do is you leave them in the string like this, like that, and then wrap them in curly braces like this. And those curly braces tell Python uh, the code that's within these curly braces is actually a variable. So let's see what happens when we run this. We get the same output actually with an extra space because I put two spaces there. Let's run that again. The 44th president of the United States was Barack Obama. Perfect. All right, so problem seven says print the sixth character of the following string. Now, we saw in the lesson that you can actually reference specific characters of a string by passing in the index of that string with square brackets like this. So this would be print out the ith letter of this string. Now, uh, you might think, okay, if we want to print out the sixth character, we want to print out six, but that's actually not the case because Python is zero indexed. So that means the first character is zero, the second character is one, the third is two, the fourth is three, all the way on up to the sixth character would actually be at index five. So you would print out the sixth character of the string with this command, and if you run it, you actually get D. So let's count along to see if this works. 1 is A, 2 is O, 3 is S, 4 is I, 5 is U, and 6 is D, so it looks like it ran properly. Awesome. Let's move on to problem 8. Print the last character of the following string. Now, we saw in the last problem that you can actually print characters from a string using the index like this. Uh, you might be tempted to actually count along this string to see, okay, if it has... 10 characters, then we want to pass in 9 here because uh, since Python is zero indexed, the last character would actually be one number smaller than the length of the string. So a string of like 10, we would want index 9, etc. But that's actually a highly inefficient way to do this because when you're programming, a lot of times you will run into strings that are very long and counting every character in it to actually determine what uh, index to pass in would be highly inefficient. So what do we do instead? We can actually just pass in negative 1, which tells Python to basically calculate the length of the string and return the index of the last character. So what happens when we run this? Are we going to get the J that we want? Let's see. Awesome. So that's problem eight. Problem nine says print the second last character of the following string. So we saw in the previous example that we can pass in negative one as the index to get the last character of a string. So to get the second last character of a string, we pass in negative two and we should get a U. Awesome. That's problem nine. Problem 10 says calculate the length of the following string. Python has a built-in function called len or len that allows you to calculate the length of many data structures, strings included. So if we pass in barbecue sauce into this, we get 16. So that means there's 16 characters in the strings uh, Frank's Red Hot. So that's how you solve problem 10. Problem 11 says transform the following string to uppercase letters and print the modified string. Okay, so... Uh, to transform a string to all uppercase letters, we use the upper method. So this is a built-in method that comes with all strings. You append it to the end of the string variable name with the dot operator, and it actually doesn't take any arguments. When we run that, it should print out this string, but in all uppercase. Perfect. Uh, as you can imagine, the lowercase uh, problem would be very similar. So we just type dot lower onto the end of this string, and we get this should be all lowercase in lowercase. So that's problems 11 and 12, both pretty easy. Problem 13 says, replace all of the I characters with Y in the following string. To do this, we use the replace method, which 
being a method, it gets appended to the end of the variable name with the dot operator, just like upper and lower were. So we do sentence dot replace. And then this one actually takes arguments. So it uh, takes two arguments. The first argument is uh, the very, or sorry, the character of the string that you want to replace. And the second variable is the string that you want the character to be replaced with. So we want to replace all of the I characters with uh, Y characters, sorry. There we go. And when we run this, we should get the uh, solution that we want. Yes, this is a sentence whose Ys will all be placed with Ys. Now, since we didn't replace this Y with anything, it actually gets passed on from the original string. So that's how you solve problem 13. That's all for strings and string operations. Thanks for watching this video. And like I said at the start, be sure to subscribe if you want to uh, get all my future videos showing you how to become a better software developer. Thanks.